In this video, I'm going to review three relatively rare and highly rated lenses. Firstly, the Helios 77M4, a 50mm f1.8 lens from the early 1990s. I'll call it the 77 from now on. Reading online discussions of old Fast 50s, not just Helios lenses, you'll come across people strongly recommending this lens. And indeed, when I posted YouTube videos on Helios 44s, people commented, you should try the 77, it's a great lens. So I thought it was time to get hold of one, take a closer look, and share my findings. Secondly, the Zenitar M, a 50mm f1.7 lens, an older lens first made in 1974. This version is from 1982. Again, reading comments about the Helios lenses, you'll see people suggesting that this lens is a better option, and I'll explain why they say this in the review. And thirdly, the Helios 44 M7, the last of the Helios 58mm f2 series. I'll be calling it the 44. It's a multi-coated lens like the 77, and according to bench tests published online, it has the sharpest center and edge performance of all the Helios 44s. Not only that, in lines measured per millimeter, center and edge, the 44 performs the best of all these three lenses. Now, as we all know, bench tests only tell part of the story of how a lens performs. They don't say anything about a lens's character, color rendering, quirks and aberrations, and so on. Characteristics that people can value quite highly these days. I haven't just selected the Helios 44 because of its bench test results. I've included it because it's a very good all-around performer. I have a lot of fast 50s, but I like to take the 44 on family holidays as a vintage-style lens. It's a very competent lens stop down, sharp and colourful, and wide open it has that interesting Helios swirly character, great for creative shots and portraits. Some people rave about their Helios 77s and Zenitar M's, but these two lenses are going to have to produce pretty damn good results to outperform the 44, so let's see how they all do in practice after looking at the specs. My lenses all have M42 mounts, the dates and factories are shown on the slide. There are different versions of the 77, and different factories made Helios lenses. There's also a much more expensive version of the Zenitar 50 f1.8, called the ME1, with only two blades. There's a lot of information online if you'd like to learn more about these different lenses, but I'll be sticking to a review of my copies of the lenses. The Helios lenses have the same optical configuration, six elements in four groups, the same as the old Biotar lenses, while the Zenitar has a different design, six elements in five groups. Apparently the Zenitar has an old Ultron design, which makes sense when we consider its bouquet characteristics later. The Helios is a multi-coated. I'm not sure about the Zenitar, but I don't believe it has particularly advanced coatings. The only other noticeable difference between the lenses is that the Zenitar has an auto-manual switch. I'll talk about this later. The Helios lenses were designed with a pin for stopping down shots on contemporary cameras, and I've had to modify both lenses so the pin is pushed down and the aperture stops down on my M42 adapters. It's a relatively simple and reversible operation, putting something around the pin that will keep it pushed down. Those are the specs, so what is it like to use the lenses in practice? Unfortunately, I've had mechanical problems with both the 44 and the 77. They both suffer from a very stiff focusing mechanism caused by old grease, a common problem with the Helios's, and in both cases, the focus ring has also started to loosen and slip, to such an extent that I've had to take each lens apart and re-grease inside, as well as tighten up the focus ring screws. I should add that the lenses were not unusable when I received them, but over time they developed these problems, and I was left with the choice of DIY or sending them away, possibly abroad, so I decided to try to repair them myself. This is not something one really wants to have to do. Neither the 77 nor the 44 are particularly cheap or easy to find. Although they're relatively simple lenses mechanically, something can always go wrong, which is precisely what happened. I won't bore you with the details, but it was a right pain in the neck dealing with tiny little screws and tiny ball bearings bouncing out of the body, and then putting the parts back together again, trying to achieve infinity focus and get the blades to open fully. Now it's done, the lenses have reassuringly smooth focus throws, and I feel like I have more emotional equity in my lenses, having saved them. All three lenses are very solid, rather hefty, not over heavy, but you certainly know they're there on the camera. I like the Zenitar's auto manual switch. It allows you to focus wide open and then easily stop down using the switch. 
In terms of optical performance, I'll start with the three lenses wide open. I think it's fair to say that a lot of people will be considering buying the lenses primarily for their faster, wider open images. And let's go straight to the question of how much swirly bouquet these lenses produce, as that's one of the main features and attractions of the Helios series lenses, if you like swirly bouquet, that is. Here's a wall of lights with each lens focused at 0.7 meters, so the lights are all out of focus. It shows how each lens renders out of focus light sources. The main thing here is that the Helios lenses produce similar light shapes, round at the center and then distorted into oval shapes that are quite flat as you move away from the center. In a 3D view, as I've demonstrated in another video, they're being twisted by the lens. In comparison, the Zenitar produces shapes that are wider, fatter towards the edges, something that indicates the images are less likely to look swirly. I appreciate this may not be instantly apparent, but it all becomes clear when we look at these three images. You can see how the two Helios lenses produce a swirly look to the out-of-focus lights, whereas the Zenitar does not, with its fatter out-of-focus shapes. You'll get the same results outside, as these three videos show, and I know some people like to see video clips of how lenses perform. Leaving aside the Zenitar, here are a few photos from the Helios lenses with their swirly bouquet to give you an indication of what the images can look like. This one from the 77 impressed me a lot. It's a feast of swirly, or some people call it twisted, bouquet with different swirly shapes, patterns and artifacts. I think it's helped that the 50mm focal length gives a wider angle view than the 58mm lens. That's the swirly bouquet, but how sharp are these lenses wide open at the point of focus? Is there a noticeable difference to the eye in how sharp the three lenses are? I found bus stop schedules an excellent way at looking at center and edge to edge sharpness. Let's zoom into the results for each lens. The 77 does a good job at the center, but it becomes a little fuzzier towards the edges but the falloff is not as bad as some old fast fifties. The 44, as the bench tests indicate, is very center sharp. This lens really is a top performer at the center wide open, and it's not bad towards the edges either. I remember when I first used the Helios 44 too, the colors and contrast seem rather murky, but there was no doubting its center sharpness, and the 44 M7 is even sharper. To give you an indication of how sharp this lens is, have a look at this image. As we zoom in, hopefully you'll see what I mean. This is a very impressive result. Absolutely no ghosting around the letters, of the kind you'll see with some other old fast fifties. The Zenitar is not so crisp wide open as the Helios is in my opinion. It has a strong reputation for sharpness, even at f1.7, but my copy lacks that biting center sharpness. It's not a showstopper in my opinion. The lens is easily sharp enough wide open. And again, if I compare it to many other old fast fifties, it does very well. Next, to look at the lens's blur and how smooth the blur is and how beautiful it looks. A rather subjective subject, but you can actually see the difference between the lenses. One of the main reasons why people wax lyrical about the Zenitar is that it's supposed to produce the most lovely background blur, lovelier than the Helios lenses. Creamy is the word some people use. I was rather sceptical about this claim. I wasn't convinced the blur was better than the Helios lenses until I started to take side-by-side -side photos. Take a look at these images. They're not the most beautiful shots I've ever taken, but I think the differences are pretty obvious in how these lenses handle out-of-focus blur. The Helios are busier, and the Zenitar has the smoothest look, just as people said. Once you've recognized this, it's hard to ignore the differences. The Zenitar's bouquet can make the Helios bouquet seem rather busy in comparison. 
Optically, what's going on here is that the Helios lenses are picking out more background details than the Zenitar, and these details are swirly as well. The Zenitar, which as we've seen produces larger, rounder bouquet balls away from the center, is rendering the blur in a smoother way and without the distracting swirly shapes. And this is helped by the fact that the Zenitar images wide open and straight out of camera can look lighter in tones and contrasts. This doesn't mean the Zenitar can't produce busy bouquet with a lot of obvious artifacts. Indeed, as we've seen, the Zenitar produces large, rounder bouquet balls in the Helios lenses. The big difference is they don't swirl like the Helios. So if you want swirls, go for the Helioses. But if you don't care for swirls and want creamy, smooth bouquet, the Zenitar is better. One other observation wide open. None of these lenses suffer from major chromatic aberrations. They're pretty well controlled. I've had a good close look at many images, and to me the Zenitar produces the most CA, but it's reasonably subtle and nothing to worry about. Now on to stop-down performance. It almost goes without saying that all three lenses sharpen up across the image frame if you stop down a little, and from around f4 the swirls in the Helios images start to disappear. The out-of-focus light shapes don't have that twisted look anymore. The downside of stopping down, of course, is that the blades start to become much more visible in the out-of-focus highlights. This is an issue for all the lenses, as they all only have six blades. Personally, I like playing with hexagon shapes on occasions, but I know it's not for everyone. And when I've posted wide open versus stop-down comparison shots online, most people seem to prefer the wide open versions. Stopping down a little can really help to enhance portraits taken with these lenses. Indeed, they're excellent portrait lenses, as witnessed from other people's photos posted online. You may have to play with skin tones a little, but that's something you may need to do with your camera settings as well. When you stop down to the optimal f-stop setting of around f8, optimal for more general shots that is, you can see from bus stop images the impact this has, especially towards the edges. Here's the 44 at f8, and it's performed very well right across the frame, as you can see if I zoom in. Although the micro details are really good, the overall image doesn't have that high-definition digital sharpness look, and that's due to the color rendering. The more muted colors and contrast in this light just takes the edge off the image. As a walk-around lens, the 44 actually produces colorful results, certainly more colorful and vivid than, say, the Helios 44 II. The multi-coatings plus a good hood help to bring out the colors and contrasts, and that's why I take this lens on summer holidays. However, in the kind of light I took the bus stop image, the 44 doesn't zing like a modern digital lens, so you may need to do some processing. Turning to the 77, it's a similar story, nice and sharp across the frame, but again, while the colours and contrasts are good, they lack that high-definition bite. I suppose that's why people call it a more vintage look. As a walk-around lens, the 77 is also fine. The colours and contrasts seem broadly similar to the 44. And the Zenitar, it does well too on the bus stop test. However, there does appear to be more fall off in resolution towards the edges. And using the lenses in a casual way for stop down walk around and landscape shots, I find the Zenitar the least impressive lens. When I look at shots taken side by side, there's not much between the lenses in terms of details if you zoom right in. But the Zenitar just seems to lack something compared to the other two, and I think colour and contrast play a part here. Firstly, the Zenitar seems to have a bluer, cooler tint to the images. And secondly, the Zenitar images can sometimes lack the deeper contrasts of the other two lenses, probably due to its relative lack of coatings. The weaker colour contrast, to my eyes, gives the Zenitar images the impression of a less sharp result, even if the micro details are there. So I don't use the Zenitar as a walk-around lens as much as the other lenses, unless it's a very bright sunny day, and I'm going to take a lot of wide-open closer-up shots, and I'm not looking to exploit swirlier backgrounds. I played around with the lens's flare resistance to direct sunlight in some video clips. All three lenses produce flares when the lens is pointed directly into the sun, not surprisingly. But the Zenitar tends to produce the most pronounced flares into the sun, as you can see. No doubt because it lacks the multi-coatings of the Helioses, and they're fun shapes to play with. Here's another set of examples. All these videos are straight out of camera, by the way.
I'm not suggesting you can't get good flares out of the helices. I was quite pleased with this image from the 44. Away from direct sunlight coming straight into the lens, all three lenses are prone to light leaks. I don't even think the multi-coatings work particularly well in this regard. Here are examples of how light can spread across the frame. This one taken at night with the Helios 77. And these ones during the day where sunlight is coming across the lenses. Where the multi-coatings do work better, as I've already mentioned, is in helping to produce better colour contrasts. The coatings produce a noticeable improvement in this regard. And of course, regardless of coatings, it always helps to have a good deep hood on the lens. I like to go out at night and see how the lenses capture starbursts, especially as different lenses do produce quite different levels and clarity of bursts. And if you like starbursts or sunbursts, some lenses are definitely better than others. The Helios 44 and Zenitar produce reasonable, although not completely clearly defined starbursts, while the 77 is a little messier. And it's the same story with these lenses if you try to capture sunbursts during the day. So now I've gone through the lens's optical performance, what else is there to say about them? Well, what about the impact of the lens's different focal lengths and f-stop speeds? Wider open, as lenses for capturing narrow depth of field and bouquet, I personally don't think there is much of a difference. The 50mm lenses are faster, but the 44M7 has a longer focal range. If you do the calculations, this all sort of evens out with respect to depth of field. At 1m, they all have a depth of field of approximately 0.04m. Close up, there's not a huge difference in the three lenses' performance, while there's walk-around or portrait lenses or landscape lenses on full frame and crop, it really becomes a matter of preference. Do you prefer the slightly longer reach of the 58mm over the 50mm, or vice versa? If I could only keep one out of the 77 or the 44, I'd probably keep the 77. I've been surprised at just how good the 77 is as a lens, especially stopped down a little, plus all those swirls at the wider 50mm. And my time testing all three lenses has confirmed something I already knew about the Zenitar, and that is it doesn't produce swirls, but it produces lovely, soft, creamy bouquet. The issue I have with the Zenitar is it's not the only lens I own that produces lovely, soft bouquet, especially my older, lesser coated lenses. So I'd say that the Zenitar is not an essential lens for me personally. It's nice to have, but not essential. In conclusion, people were right to point me in the direction of the Helios 77M4 and suggest I buy one, and I'm very grateful for that. Except, except it was incredibly hard to find one, or what I considered a reasonable price, for quite a rare old lens, but not one that I thought would be significantly better than my Helios 44M7. So I waited and waited, and eventually found one under $150. However, it quickly developed problems, and it could have ended up costing me a lot more in repairs. In fact, the original cost plus repairs could easily have reached the kind of high prices I sometimes see them for sale online. So this begs the question, are the 77s worth the price? Because they are quite rare, they should retain or increase in value. They're very good lenses, capable of fascinating and artistic images, a different kind of result to the Zenitar, for example, and a definite step up from the Helios 442s, but less so compared to the 44M7s. On balance, leaving aside the bent sharpness tests that favour the 44, I think the 77 is a more interesting lens with more character, and it certainly gets my vote as a winner. But I guess you pays your money and you takes your choice. And personally, I'll be keeping both the 44M7 and the 77M4. They're my palindrome pair. Please let us know what you think in the comments if you own any of these lenses. I know from reading a lot of reviews online that many people rate these lenses very highly, while others think they're overrated, so I'd really like to read your views. And until the next time, all the best.